earlier, much earlier, uh, because it was on a Sunday that the Lord rose from the dead when the Murberries went to that empty tomb thinking they were going to find the body of their beloved Lord and instead were shocked and amazed that it was empty. And we know that this is the bedrock of our faith, this reality that Jesus Christ conquered death. And that has so much purpose and meaning for us. We are forever changed by that reality. It is what changed the world. We're only a few individuals, a handful of faithful women and the disciples would end up spreading this faith. They were so convicted. They went to all corners of the world as far as they could go, sharing this message, and were willing to suffer greatly. Let no one tell you that being a Christian is a promise to worldly and earthly success because you just look at the lives of the apostles and what they endured, and you see something quite opposite. But that doesn't mean that they failed because in God's eyes, they were truly blessed because they had purpose. They had the light of the Lord. They had his love. They had peace. These things come with a relationship with the risen Lord. And above all, my brothers and sisters, as one priest said, Christ is risen. Those words, that reality, really should dispel despair from our hearts because Christ has conquered death. He has conquered evil. And if we align ourselves with him through the church, because the church continues the work that Christ started, we will overcome whatever travail, whatever adversity. One of the worst things to experience in life is despair, hopelessness. It's one of the worst feelings, and I'm sure we've all experienced it. But what could be more hopeless than the Messiah being crucified and dead in a tomb? And he overcomes that. And so this is the message. The light that we're holding here is the light of hope, of God's love, which conquers all. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us be rooted in that reality so that when we say Christ is risen, which we will say and greet each other for the next 40 days, let it not just be words, but let it change our life. Knowing that if we cling on to the Lord, and how do we do that? We do that with our own prayer life. We do that with having Uh, a connection with the church, participating regularly in the sacraments of the church. That is why Christ established the church, his body, so that we do not journey in this life alone. It's not meant to be a me and Jesus uh, relationship. We come closer to God in community. For the Lord himself says, where two or three are gathered in, in my name, there I am in their midst. We do have a personal relation with the Lord in our own prayer life, but that is never independent from the communal life. It can never be separate. At least that was never the case in the early church. That was inconceivable, that you would be alone with the Lord in your relationship and apart from the community, because it was within the community, which is the church, that you grew in the faith and you grew closer to the Lord through the sacraments of baptism, unction, holy communion, the pinnacle of the sacraments. And so my brothers and sisters, this message is one of hope, but it's not some kind of like uh, mystical thing. There are steps and there are actions that we can take to make that hope in us more secure and to dispel despair, not to go it alone in our spiritual life, 
but to connect to the church, to be regular participants in the church, so that we will be protected in this life. Adversities will come, challenges will come, but a life in the church will keep us moving forward and will dispel the despair. We will know that somehow, some way, Christ will get us through, but that does come through the community, the church. And so we thank the Lord that although we know that he ascended into heaven 40 days after his resurrection, he does not leave us or abandon us. He continues to be in our midst primarily within the community of believers, the church, and he continues to unite himself with us through the sacraments so that we will always have the conviction of hope and never be overcome by whatever travails and challenges the world offers us. This is what the church invites us to. This is why we read all these languages, because this message is for all people. We know that so many suffer anxiousness and despair. And the church is here to open her arms and to embrace everybody and to tell them, fear not, because Jesus Christ is with you, and if he is with you, who or what can be against you? So my brothers and sisters, again, this is why we rejoice. This is why as Christians, we must be people who have the most hope and the most joy because of what God has done for us and that he's with us every step of the way through his church. God bless you all. And again, Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. And it is a joy to see all of you as we continue the celebration all week. This is a very special week that we have before us. The week after Pascha is called Renewal Week, the new week, because with Christ's resurrection, he has made all things new. He has reopened paradise, which is why the doors of the Econostasios are opened as a reminder that Christ has once again given us access to him through paradise because of his abundant love for each and every one of us, which we so often forget, but that love never fades. His love for us never fades. And so we celebrate this week tomorrow with liturgy for St. George the Martyr at 930 for those who are able to make it. Uh, then Wednesday for St. Irini at 9.30, and then Friday.